This is Jack Jackson. Today we're going to be talking about linear functions. I'm going to kind of give you a little overview, an introduction and an overview actually, of linear functions. This is going to be making use of this geometry sketch pad sketch that we have here. So the first task we're going to look at is what if we start with five blocks, that's going to be this y sub zero here, and we're going to add three blocks each step. So at the zeroth step, we have five blocks, which you can see down here in the lower left corner. And x is going to count the number of steps, and y is going to count the total number of blocks. So if I just click on this equals here and press, press plus, it's going to go up by one, and notice that we did exactly what we said we were going to do. We're going to add three blocks, and we have a total of eight blocks. Then we can press it again and add three more. Now we're up to 11, and then three more, and three more three more, three more. Each time we add a step, we're adding three blocks. Okay, I'm going to back it back down to the beginning. So hopefully what we can see here is that each time we press this and add a step, we're adding the same number of blocks each time. So let's make a table of this and see what we have here. So in this table, x is going to be which step we're on, and y is going to be the number of blocks. So we started at the zeroth step, we had five blocks. You can see that with the red arrow here, we're pointed to zero, five. But as I go over here and increase the step, we move down the table to one, eight. And then we go to the order pair two, eleven, because we're on the second step, and we have a total of eleven blocks. Notice that we've added three two times to our original five. And we can keep doing this moving down the table. So we see that we have a pattern that's emerging here. This pattern is called an arithmetic sequence. That we're adding the same amount each time. Okay, so what is that? How do we get uh, a formula for this here? Well, we notice that there's a pattern, and the pattern is, is that we started with 5 the first time, then we added 3 to get the 8. We took the 8 and added 3 to get the 11. We took the 11 and added 3 to get the 14, and so forth, working down the pattern. So if we wrote a formula, f of x, we can write a recursive formula that says, if we want to um, find our particular x, like here at 10, we want to find the y that goes with that, which would be f of 10. What do we do? We back up 1 to 9, find its y value, its number of blocks, and just add 3. In a formula, this is to find f of x, we back up 1 to x minus 1. We find its y value, which is f of x minus 1, which is the number of blocks. And then we take that f of x minus 1 and add the number of blocks that we're adding each time. In this case, uh, the number of blocks we're adding each time is 3. We're going to call that uh, m. And so we're adding m blocks each time. Now, this sketch is dynamic, so if I want to change this and say I don't want to start with 5 blocks, I'd rather start with um, 7 blocks. And I don't want to go up by 3 at a time. I can go up by 2 at a time we can see how this works out. So now what are we doing? We're starting at seven blocks and we're adding two blocks each time. Well, another way to see this is to look at some more detail here in this case, now we've started with seven blocks and we've added two. So the next one is seven plus two. The next one is seven plus two plus two more. And then the next one is seven plus two plus two plus another two. And each time we're adding another two. So every one of these looks just like seven, our initial amount, plus a certain number of twos. Well, how many twos are there? Well, the number of twos is the same as the number of steps. Now, do we know any way of writing, repeatedly adding the same thing over and over again? 
Is there another way to write that in a shorter notation? Well, if we think back to our basic elementary school about what multiplication is, in its most basic form, multiplication is exactly that. It's repeated addition, okay, at least as long as one of the numbers is a whole number. This makes sense. And so we can say uh, this one is 7 plus 1, 2. So we have 1, 2 added. The next one is 7 plus 2 plus 2. So two twos is 2 times 2, and so forth. And so we can see that all of these are 2 times some number plus 7. So where is the 7? The 7 is the number of blocks that we had at the beginning. 7 blocks here at the beginning. That's what we started with. That's our y sub 0. And that's our y of 0. That's our output when x is 0. So that's our starting amount. What is the number in parentheses? How does it compare to x? Well, if you look every time, it's the same as x. So what is the 2? The 2 is the amount that we're adding each time. We'll call that m. We're going to also call that the slope. And so what is the formula? Well, one version of writing the formula is y equals 2x plus 7, because what's in the parentheses here is just x. So in general, this could be written as y equals mx plus y sub 0. y sub 0 is what we started with. That's the y of 0. That's the y here when x is 0, our initial amount. The m is the slope. That's how much we're adding each time when we add 1. When we add 1 to the x, the m is how much we add each time to the y. So notice that each y, we're adding 2 to the previous y when we go up by 1 on x. Now, some people may have looked at this and said, well, wait a minute, I, I didn't really like the idea of starting with the zero step. What if we started with uh, a first step or something like that? Could we, could we uh, notate that somehow? Well, there's a way to do that, and we can see that a little bit different way and that's this if we think of this as step one okay notice what we have here is at, at step one we have nine blocks okay but now what we do is we have we've already added two to our seven so let's look at this formula right here. This formula says, okay, if we start with 9 here, notice if we put the, then this number here is how far off we are from that. So in other words, we want to start with the 9. We don't want to add anything to the 9. So we have to take this 1 away from the x. And that's how many twos we add. So notice we could take this formula here, and it would apply all the way up and down the, the table. So for example, if we plug in 1, we have 1 minus 1 is 0 times 2 is 0 plus 9 is 9. If we take the same formula and plug in 2, we got 2 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, times 2 is 2, plus 9 is 11. And then the 3 in the same formula, 3 minus 1 is 2, times 2 is 4, plus 9. And so what we find here, okay, again, if we look at this, we can think of each of these as 9 plus a certain number of 2s instead of 7 plus a number of 2s, but the number of 2s is 1 less then. Well, we can also look at it as centering here at 2 and 11. Okay, so the 2 is here and the 11 is here. So if we plug in 11 here, then if we adjust this by doing x minus 2, when we plug in the 2, this part will be 0, and so we'll get an output of 11 as we needed. And then every time you go up 1 here, we're still going to be adding one more 2 to that 11. Or as we go down the table, we'll be subtracting a 2 from the table, from the y value in the table. So this is called the point-slope formula, okay, because this still has the 2 in there as the point, but we have a, a, a 
an x and a y value in the formula. Okay, we'll come back to looking at this a little bit more in detail, but notice that we have a point slope formula for every single point in the table. Let's take a look at the graph now. Okay, here's an x and y axes. Uh, it's not complete. It's not actually a square scale the way I've got it set up here, because uh, zero to ten is, is going up this far, and zero to ten is a little further this way. But nevertheless, we have a dot here. We have a dot above zero because we have a zero step. We have a first step, and it goes on. Notice this particular thing didn't uh, have a negative step. It doesn't have steps in the halves. That you don't have half a step. We're going up in discrete chunks. It does go on forever, so these dots will continue on out upwards and to the right. But we have just dots like this. So when we have a sequence, then the graph looks something like this where you have isolated dots. Now remember a sequence is just a function whose domain is either the whole numbers or the natural numbers. And so we are not allowed to plug in x's such as uh, 2.5 or 1.7 or pi or the square root of 3. We have we can only have these uh, here. In fact, in this case, it doesn't even necessarily make sense to talk about negative steps. However, we could extend this idea, use the same formula here, but allow any real number for x, and of course, in that case, you'll get any real number for y, and of course, what you'll actually get is a straight line that includes those dots. Notice that all those dots do line up in a straight line. And it goes on forever and fills in the gaps as well. So this is called a linear function. So a linear function with the domain restricted to the natural numbers is just an arithmetic sequence. But a, a linear function uh, could also have all reals as the domain and so we get a full solid line. So we're going to come back to this in a minute. So here's an example of a line. Let's see if we can figure out the formula of this line and also investigate this a little bit more. Notice that we start We start here with with a um, a point right here on the, when x is zero, we see y is two. Okay, and from there, when we go to the right one, if I can get this where I want it to be. not working for me. Let me try that again. Understand why I'm not getting my pen here. A little 
let's go to this. Okay, notice here that we have a line, and right here on the uh, the x-axis we have a point, and the y-axis we have a point. So let's take. Let's just start this over again. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, here we have a line that's graphed. Let's take a look at this line and see if we can examine it a little more closely. And also, maybe we can figure out the formula for this as well. So we notice at this point right here where it crosses the y-axis is the point 0, 6. And we notice that if we go to the right one, we're going to call that delta x for the change in x, or x2 minus x1. Then we go up 3. So delta y is uh, y2 minus y1. So in our case, this is 1 for delta x, and delta y is 3. So this delta y is the slope when delta x is 1. And notice that if we ever where we are on this, when we go the right one, we're going up 3. That's what makes it straight. That's why this is a linear function. That's why the graph is a straight line. Is every time we go the right one, we go up 3. And we started at 6, so this is a formula. y equals 3x plus 6. And you can check that out with some of the numbers here. So for example, if you plug in 1, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 6 is 9. So there's the point 1, 9. Okay. So notice if you take any point on here, okay, let's call it x1, y1, and we go to any point, any other point, let's say here, x2, y2, and let's look at the delta x. This time delta x is 2. Well, we're no longer going up 3, but we're going up, if you count that, we get a delta y is 6. So what we're doing is we're doing this delta x is like two steps. The first step we go up 3, the second step we go up another 3. So we, how do you look at this and get the slope out of these two points here where we went to the right 2 and up 6? Well, I think you'll notice that that slope then is just delta y divided by delta x. 
that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. Now another way to look at that is this. If you see this, any, any of these triangles here, let's say we take this one that we started with right up here, okay, and we look at uh, a different one like this bigger one down here, we notice that since this is a straight line and since all of the grid lines are parallel, the horizontal ones are parallel, the vertical ones are, are parallel to each other, we see that this angle that it makes with the horizontal is the same. And of course this is a right angle. So these are similar triangles. So the ratio of sides is proportional. So if we take the delta y divided by the delta x, that is the same for this triangle as it is for this triangle. It's also known as the tangent of this angle that it makes with the horizontal. It's also known as the slope of this line. So the slope is constant there. So the slope, which is delta y over delta x, that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, is constant for lines, for linear functions. This is the most, one of the most important things about lines, that this slope, which is also known as the rate of change, is constant. That's what makes it a line. That's what makes it straight. That's what made it have that pattern back in the uh, example we looked at where the, we're adding the same amount each time. And that's what led to the formulas that we came up with. Now, let's go up here and just take an arbitrary point. Let's take a point that we know. Let's say this x1, y1 a specific point there, and then take any other point on here, x, y. Well, we know that that slope is going to, between those two points is the same. So we take x, y, an arbitrary point, and x, 1, y, 1, a specific point. then we know that if it's going to be a line, the slope, delta y over delta x, is going to be constant. Well, delta y is y minus y1, and delta x is x minus x1. Now, if I multiply both sides of this equation by x minus x1, cancel this out, I end up with y minus y1, I'm going to switch sides as well, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So this is the point slope version of the line. See, m is the slope. And x1, y1 is a point, a specific point that's on the line in the table. Same thing. Okay. Now let's look back here and uh, let's do a couple things here. So if I go down here, give me a new 
new page here. Okay. Now let's put our let's put our uh, graph back in here. Okay. Get a clean copy of that. Now, so every point on there we have a point slope version of the equation for every point. So if you think back to our sketch here, when we had our point slope version, we've got it here for every single point in the table. There's an equation of the line. Now remember, this equation works for all the points in the in the table, all the points on the line. It's just centered up at a, any particular point. So if we look at that in general, a couple of these in spe are specific ones I want us to look at. So let me go back to my pen here. And if we have this point here, 0, y sub 0, the y-intercept, if that's our point, and m is our slope, then our equation, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, becomes y minus y0 equals m times x minus 0. So this the right side just becomes mx. This is y minus y0, and this becomes y equals mx plus y sub 0. Some people will call this b, y equals mx plus b. I like to call it y0 because it is y of 0. So this is called the slope intercept form. More appropriately, it should be called the slope y intercept form because it's the y intercept that we know here. Now, let me show you another form, though. What if we look at this point here where it crosses the x-axis? Let's call that x sub 0, comma, 0. Of course, y is 0 if it's on the x-axis. x is 0 if it's on the y-axis. So if that's your point, x sub 0, 0, then we would take y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, this becomes y minus 0 equals m times x minus x sub 0. So y equals m times x minus x sub 0. So this is a slope x-intercept form. Okay? Oh, this is also sometimes called a factored form because we have the right, y is written as a function, and on the right side is factored as two things multiplied together. So if you know the x-intercept, we can get this form here. So for example, up here, we see the x-intercept is negative 2, 0. So we can write this as, and we know the slope was 3, right? Let's see, write 1 up 3, yeah. So it's y equals 3, x minus a negative 2, or you'd rather write it as 3x plus 2. That's our specific example up above. And of course the slope intercept form, uh, slope y intercept form, it went through 6 on the y-axis, so this is y equals 3x plus 6. So both of these forms, this one here that's expanded out, and this one down here that's factored, are both good forms. This one down here we can see the x-intercept is negative 2, 0, and this one up here we can see the y-intercept is 0, 6. Okay, let's go back to here. So now let's take a look at this and see a little bit more about what's going on with this graph. So in this particular version you can see delta x and delta y so we're going to the right one, and you can go down here. Now, if we look at this slider here, it changes the y sub 0, which is 2.88 at the moment. And as I move this, notice it takes the whole picture and just slides it up or down. And, of course, whatever this value is, that's where it's crossing the x -axis, uh, y axis, the y coordinate of the y intercept. Right now it's 3.24. If I leave that fixed, let's let's make it something uh, nice like 4 if I can make it. Or maybe 
five. Let's make it five. Okay. No, I don't like that. That's too high. Let's make it. Let's get it down here. Let's just make it one. Okay. So it's one. And then now let's let's change the slope. So notice look what's happening. As we increase that slope, the delta x is staying one, but the amount we go up when we go to the right one is bigger or smaller as we change that slope. So notice as we increase that slope, the line gets steeper and steeper and steeper. If we go all the way down to a slope of zero, that's when we have actually a horizontal line, and the formula is just y equals a constant horizontal line. If the slope is positive, it's going up as you go from left to right, an increasing function. If the slope is zero, it's a constant function, neither increasing nor decreasing. But if the slope goes negative, it decreases. The bigger the absolute value, the steeper it is. So steepness is actually not the slope, it's the absolute value of the slope. So very, very steep, so steep would be either a large absolute value with negative or large absolute value with positive. Slopes close to zero would be not be very steep. In this version here, we're allowed to actually just type in the numbers. So if I want to type in a particular one, A is the, uh, the slope. So I could have a slope of uh, 2.5 if I want, exactly there. And a y-intercept of uh, negative 1 if I want. And there it is. And we can see that. That shows the y-intercept. That shows the x-intercept and gives the points of that, uh, the coordinates that go with that. Now, one thing that's interesting about a line is that it's completely determined by two points. And what that means is, given any two points, there exists, there always exists a line through the two points and exactly one line. And this version allows you to just move those two points anywhere you want and the software draws the, uh, the line and it computes the formula over here, at least approximately. And we can see this. This one does the same thing, but allows you to type in the coordinates of the two points that you want. So say we had a point at 1, um, 2, Uh, 4, 2, excuse me, 4, 2, that's the point O. And then let's say we have a point at 6, 5. Okay, so you can see point at 4, 2, a point at 6, 5. Now, what is the equation of that line if you're given two points? Well, to find that, we need to find the slope. So we need to do delta Y divided by delta X. So notice, if we're going from point O to point N, we're going right to and we're going up 3. So that's 3 over 2, or 1.5 is a slope. And then we could write it in slope point slope formula, or we could actually go back and figure out the, the uh, y-intercept as well. So in this case, if I have, uh, I have a point that we know it goes through, so we had 4, 2, 6, 5. Okay, so 4, 2, 6, 5. We want to find the slope. That is 5 minus 2 over 6 minus... 5 minus 2 over 6 minus 4. That's 3 over 2, or 1.5. We can do this a couple of ways. We can say if we want the y equals mx plus y sub 0 formula, we could uh, plug in this m, 3 halves x, like this, plug in a point that we know, like 4, 2, and just simply solve for y0. Uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2, times 3 is 6. 
and solve for y is 0, we subtract 6 is negative 4. So if one way we'd write the formula is y equals uh, 3 halves x minus 4. So that says that when we look at the graph, it should be crossing the, uh, the axis down here at negative 4. If we could go down far enough on that. Okay, now let's look back. Another way we could do it, of course, is to use the point slope formula. And we have a couple options here because of the point we have. So you can say y minus y1, 2, equals the slope, which was 3 halves. And then it's x minus the x1. And, of course, if we multiply this all out and solve for y, we, we, we could get this version here. Another way we can find a line is just know a single point, which we're allowed to, uh, oh, this one's done by parameter. So this one we type in the coordinates according to the point we want. So let's say we want it at uh, 2, 3. So there's x is 2, y is 3. There we go. There's our point. And we can type in what we want for the slope. Let's say we want a slope of 1.5. So it says we go to the right one, we go up 1.5. One or another way to say that is if we go, let's see, the right one, right one we go up one and a half, we go to the right two we go up three. So it looks like this one is going to go through there. Okay, this is, okay, let's see what we got, we have a little problem here. I need to make this where it shows more. Looks like the slope is two, but it's not. Um, we'll fix that. There we go. Now that looks better. Okay. And this one says that we have the slope and the root. That a root, or, or in other words, is another word for the x-coordinate of the x-intercept. So if we know that it crosses the x-axis at, say, 4, and has a slope of 2, that's the formula then is 2 times x minus 4. It goes through 4 here and goes up. So, notice if you know the x-intercept and you want to find the, the formula, we can just find the slope of the line, okay? And then we can uh, put that here, and then we have x minus that x-intercept will give us, the x-coordinate of the x-intercept will give us the uh, equation of the line. So, the slope is the average rate of change. It's delta y over delta x. That is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, where x1, y1 is a point on the graph, and x2, y2 is a point on the graph. The y-intercept is 0, y sub 0. The x-intercept is x sub 0, 0, and notice that minus the opposite of y0 over m is the x sub 0, so there's a relationship between the, the intercepts. It's increasing if the slope is positive, it's constant if the slope is 0, and it is negative if... The, uh, if the, the slope is negative, it's decreasing. There is one other possibility for a line uh, that we're not that's not a linear function, and that is if you arrange this so that the line is truly vertical. Let's see if I can get it here. Okay. In this case, notice that delta x would be zero. You'd be dividing by zero here, so the slope is undefined. So there is no slope, and it doesn't have a y equals mx plus b or formula. It doesn't have a y equals anything formula. It's just x equals a constant. So, for example, if I put this in the right place here, uh, I could get the equation x equals 10, for example. So that gives us a little bit of an overview of linear functions.